Hi, my name is Scott Wilkinson, and I'm going to be teaching you today the fundamentals of a snare drum technique that was taught to me at the Juilliard School by Buster Bailey. Now, Buster Bailey was one of the percussionists in the New York Philharmonic for the better part of the 20th century, and he was the orchestra's primary snare drummer. So if you pick up any classical recordings by the New York Philharmonic, particularly under Leonard Bernstein, you'll hear Buster on snare drum. Anyway, when I got to Juilliard, I thought I was a pretty good drummer, but studying with Buster was like percussion boot camp because Buster completely tore your playing down to scratch and then rebuilt it from the ground up using his philosophy and his technique. Um, since then, I've never found any snare drum technique that I thought was better. I think it's an amazing technique, and it's something that I have continued to practice over the years since I graduated from Juilliard, and I'll tell you a little bit about it now. Buster's technique is rooted in three primary actions. The first is the throw, the second, drop, and the third, following the rebound with your wrist. So we're gonna talk about those three actions in just a moment, but first I'm gonna say a couple of brief words about the grip. Now, I'm not gonna to get too into detail about the grip because I know that grip is a very individual thing, and frankly, there are a few different things that work well, and I don't think it's the most important aspect of this technique that I'm showing you. But very briefly, the fulcrum is between the thumb and the index finger, like it is with any snare drum grip, and underneath, all I'm doing is taking my third and ring fingers, middle and ring fingers, and just gently wrapping them under the stick, and my pinky really isn't used at all. I could pretty much lose the pinky. Now, this is a little different from marching and rudimental snare drumming, because in marching percussion, often that pinky will also be wrapped around the stick and used to, to derive added power or what have you. But in this kind of technique, we're not even going to use the pinky. It stays off the stick. So that, in a nutshell, is pretty much how I grip. It's a firm but gentle and relaxed grip, not a death grip, not squeezing the stick. But here's the key, and this is very important. In this technique of snare drumming, there is very little, in fact, I would say, no play allowed like this of the stick in your fingers. A lot of percussionists will do a lot of this kind of a thing with their stick, and that is not cool. You're not going to get the best results like that with this technique that was uh, taught to me by Buster Bailey. So firm but gentle grip, and all of the motion is going to come from the wrist. Now, let's get back to those three primary actions that I talked about, the throw, the drop, and following the rebound. Now, for the first part, the throw, I'm going to give you an, a visual example that hopefully will make a lot of sense in terms of what has to happen with each one of your wrist when you throw the stick at the head, because that's in fact what you're doing. You're throwing the stick at the head of the drum. It's a controlled throw, but it's still a throw nevertheless. So I'd like you to take a look at this for just a minute, because it's very, very similar, if not identical, to the kind of motion that you have with a snare stick. When you take a ball and throw it to the floor, notice how your hand is completely relaxed. You should try this yourself. It's amazing, but your hand is just naturally relaxed when you do this. So, taking that same analogy that we used with the ball and keeping your wrist just as relaxed as it was when we threw the ball and bounced it off the floor, you're going to be doing the same thing with your stick. You're going to take the stick with a very loose wrist, firm but gentle grip, and you're going to throw it into the head, like so. Let me take that other stick off of there, rattling a bit. So I'm throwing the stick into the head. My wrist is very relaxed, but it's no different than when I had that ball in my hand and I was throwing that ball to the floor and then catching it again. It's a very fluid, loose, relaxed motion like that. Throw. I'm throwing the bead of the stick into the head. Throw. That's action number one. Now action number two is the drop. And the drop is a very gentle, hyper-relaxed, quiet, gentle tap. Probably the thing that, that most drum set players could relate to with the drop is a ghost note. A ghost note and a drop are very similar to one another. A drop is simply starting off with the bead just maybe an inch above the head, maybe less than that, and just dropping it. I don't even know if you can hear that on video, but it's a very light little tap. And the key here is that I'm not striking the head with the stick. I am literally letting the stick go from a half an inch above the head and then just picking it up again. It's just the tiniest little drop. So now to review, we have these two actions. We have the throw and the drop. Very gentle. Throw, drop. Throw, drop. Throw, drop. 
Okay, now, now we get to the more complicated action. We covered the throw, we covered the drop. Now we're gonna cover following the rebound with your wrist, and this is absolutely critical. Now, what this means is, is that typically, the way drummers, most snare drummers anyway, achieve rebound is one of a few different ways that are very different than what this technique is all about. Now, one of the ways people will do it is they won't even use rebound at all. They'll simply muscle their way through all the notes. They'll simply strike a bunch of notes using the wrist and forearm for the power behind every single tap. Now, that's the way a lot of people think drum chord drummers play. Some of them do, some don't. Um, a lot of power rock drummers play that way, but it's all about muscle. It's all about mm, 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 and muscling every single note. That's not a good way to do it. Now, another way that people will uh, try to leverage rebound or try to use rebound to get more speed is they'll loosen the stick up in their hand and they'll do this kind of a thing where they'll actually use their fingers. They'll use their fingers under the stick in this kind of a motion, pulling the stick up underneath their wrist, their palm rather. And that's not a good way to do it either because it, it sacrifices control when you do that. And it also isn't very loose. I mean, it's, it can be, I suppose, but it's nowhere near as, as efficient as what I'm about to show you. So what Buster Bailey's technique is all about is in throwing the stick into the head and then following the natural rebound of the stick up off of the head with your wrist. Now, in order to do this, your wrist has to be supremely relaxed. I mean, like as in you're dead asleep relaxed. There can be no tension in your wrist whatsoever because your wrist has to be very finely attuned to feeling that rebound of the stick coming back up off the head. Now, a good exercise to practice when you're first sort of getting the feel for this is to simply throw the stick into the head, let it rebound naturally, and follow those naturally decaying rebounds with your wrist as long as possible. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Now, it may seem as though I'm tapping each one of those notes, but all I'm doing is throwing the first one and the rest is all rebound and all gravity. And I'm following the rest of those taps with my wrist. My wrist is extremely loose and very relaxed. Now, what happens with a lot of drummers is that even if you think you may be sensitive in your wrist. What often happens is that there's still a certain amount of tension in your wrist. And what happens is, is when you throw the stick into the head, the stick comes up and it goes bam, and it hits that tension in your wrist, which tends to dampen the rebound, which then creates more work for you because then you've got to work much harder to get the rebound. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to follow the stick's natural rebound as much as possible. You see how that very first bounce See, the stick is coming all the way up to here. I'm not pulling it up there. I'm letting the stick come up there all by itself. It's the natural energy contained in the rebound, and I'm just following that rebound with my wrist. That's all I'm doing. So this is a good exercise to do. Try it with both hands, left hand and right hand. Very important to be equally sensitive in both of your wrists. You want to throw and just follow the rebounds with your wrist. Now, just a quick side note right here. Many of you have probably already noticed that I'm playing match grip. Um, I can play traditional grip, and when I first got to Juilliard, I played traditional grip, but Buster actually converted me to match grip. And probably the most simple reason for it is a reason you've probably heard many times, which is that it's much easier to teach because it's symmetrical. Everything is completely symmetrical. What you do with the left, you do with the right. There's no rewriting the book, so to speak, for the left hand. Um, I still think traditional grip is kind of cool because it's traditional, but as a rule, I don't really play with it anymore. Now, you can still apply this same technique to traditional grip, but you won't see me doing it here. At least I could try, but generally speaking, I don't play traditional grip much anymore. But if you were gonna do that same thing with traditional grip, it might look a little bit like this. Like that. So you can still do it traditional, but I recommend match grip, personally, because I think it's superior, because it's balanced, it's symmetrical, it's even across the board. So again, throw the bead into the head, follow the bounces. Throw, throw. And remember, that throwing motion is a very fluid, relaxed motion, just like when we bounce that ball off the floor.
Now, this has been based on the principle of throw followed by drops. We're throwing the stick and then dropping it multiple times following the natural rebound. Throw, drop, 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 drop. Throw, drop, 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 drop. Throw, drop, 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 drop. Okay, sounds silly, I know, but that's what's going on here. So another good exercise to practice, and this is where things get really interesting and where they really start to benefit your playing, and that's when you flip the two around, you drop followed by a throw. Now what's tricky about this is that when you start with the bead of the stick, just half an inch, an inch off the head, and you drop the stick to the head, you have to have the sensitivity and quickness in your wrist to pick up on that drop, that tiny little ghost note, and then immediately convert that into a fluid, relaxed throw. So what you end up with is something like this. So it's a drop throw, drop throw, drop throw, drop throw, drop throw, drop throw. So it's that drop throw that we're gonna see again and again and again in some of the later exercises I'll show you. And this is where this technique really starts to do amazing things with your playing. Now let's convert this into a rhythmic context. So far, the first exercise that I showed you was simply an arrhythmic, purely mechanical exercise, which is just getting the feel for the throw and then the subsequent drops after the throw. And this is really important. Take your time doing this. I'd recommend that you spend a good 15, 20, 30 minutes a day at first just doing what I'm doing right now. Because what you want to do is you want to focus especially on that first rebound. You want that first rebound to come up as high as it possibly can. But remember, no cheating. Don't let that rebound come up at like this by opening up your fingers. You can't do that. We're not doing this kind of a thing, okay? Very important. We are following that rebound up. You see how my wrist is almost at a 90 degree angle here. We are following the rebound up with our wrist. Very important. So focus on getting that first rebound up as high as you possibly can. Okay, so in terms of a rhythmic exercise where you can practice the same principles, probably the most basic one is this. Um, we're going to be in 2-4 time, or 4, doesn't really matter, 2 or 4. We're playing eighth notes, and what you're going to do is you're going to throw the first eighth note, drop the next two eighth notes, each one of which will be successively quieter, and then you'll just do a very tiny little drop with your alternate hand. So we'll start off with the right hand. So we're going to go throw, drop, drop, drop. And that's the exercise. Throw, drop, drop, drop. Throw, drop, drop, drop. And that left hand, as you notice, I'm keeping right on the head, not lifting the left hand up at all. And I'm throwing that first note into the head with my right hand, and I'm dropping the subsequent notes. Throw, drop, 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 throw, drop, 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 throw, drop, drop, drop. Now we can flip it over and do the same thing with our left hand. Throwing the downbeat with our left hand, followed by two eight more eighths with the left and the last eighth note, just a gentle drop with the right. Now the key when you're doing these exercises is again, you've got to be supremely relaxed at all times. You've got to be really aware of the lack of tension or the presence of tension in your wrist when you're doing this. If you feel any tension creeping into your wrist while you're doing this, you gotta say, whoa, 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 stop, 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 shake your hands out, relax, slow it down a little bit, and then open it up if you have to, slow it down a little, throw, drop, drop, throw, drop, drop. Throw, drop, 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 throw, drop, 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 throw, drop, drop. And then gradually, over time, you can work on speeding it up. And I'm not going to go too fast right now, just because there's not much point in it at the moment. But generally speaking, though, over time, you might get it up to somewhere in this ballpark. Again, each downbeat is a throw, throw. Sorry, goofed up there. Throw, 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 throw. Not used to talking and playing at the same time. I'll accelerate it a bit more. Okay, now again, 
it's really important. I can't emphasize this enough, so forgive me for repeating it, but it's really important that you know that when I'm doing this, I'm not doing this with my fingers to get those fast notes, and I'm also not going, I'm not hitting every single one of those notes. The only energy that I'm using when I do that is on that initial throw, throw, and that's it. And then I'm just coasting for the rest of the beat after that. That's it, just throw. That's the only energy there is, it's just. So for all practical purposes, even when I'm playing it fast, all I'm doing is this. That's why it's really, really easy, and that's why this technique is great. Because when you can play those faster notes by following the rebound, this is all the energy you're using. You're not using any more energy in that, and you haven't sacrificed control because you're not loosening your hand up to let the stick rotate around as if it were on a hinge like that. You're following that with your wrist. Okay, so from here, um, we're getting close to the end of the video for now. Um, I want to show you just a couple of more exercises. Now, one of the most I don't know, sort of fundamental core exercises that Buster showed me when I first started taking lessons with him at Juilliard, and which I practiced probably, I have probably practiced this one exercise thousands of hours since then. I never stopped doing it. It's one of those fundamental uh, warm-ups, I guess you could call it, but it's also really critical to this technique. And what I'll do is I'll be in, let's say, 3-4 time. You could say 6-8, but we'll say we're in 3, okay, and we're playing eighth notes. And all we're going to do is play a whole bar of eighth notes with one hand and then lightly drop the downbeat to the next one as a flam while we switch hands over to the next one. So basically, we're just going to be going one and two and three and 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 one and two and three. And, and again, I'm just throwing that initial note and then I'm letting the rest bounce, and I'm just following that bounce with my wrist. Incredibly relaxed, incredibly relaxed. Following the rebound. One and two, three, and one and two, and three, and one and two, and three, one and two, and three, and. Now again, as I said before, very important that you have that little internal warning light that starts blinking, goes off, when you feel the tiniest little bit of tension. And I'll tell you how you know that, and it's happened to me a million times, even after doing this for decades. What'll happen is, is that you'll get up to a certain speed when all of a sudden you'll realize that you're no longer following the rebounds. And instead, what you're doing is you're muscling every stroke. You're going one and two and three and. And when that happens, you gotta stop. It doesn't matter whether you can do that or not. I can sit here all day and go one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and, but that's not what I wanna do, okay? So even if you can muscle every single one of those notes, that's not the point of this technique. The point of this technique is you throw the downbeat and the rest are all free. You pay for the first note and the rest are completely free. They don't cost you anything. They don't cost you anything in tension. They don't cost you anything in energy. They are completely free because you're just following the rebound. One, two, three. 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 Now I'll speed it up just a little bit here, just to sort of demonstrate how critical it is to be relaxed. Now right now, it may look like I'm playing these taps pretty fast, but you know what? This is effortless. I could do this all day at this speed. And again, the reason for that is because all I'm doing is this. That's the only energy I'm using. All the rest of those taps are for free. But even, even with my experience and even having studied with Buster for all these years, if I try to push it even faster than that, pretty soon I'll feel the tension start to creep into my wrist. And pretty soon I'll realize that I'm starting to muscle all those notes. And that's when I say stop. I say, ah, that's it, forget it. So what I would recommend you do is sit down. It's kind of boring, okay? So you might want to do it while you're watching TV, listening to an audio book, staring out the window at a pretty, ce a pretty scenery if you have it. And do this, start off real slow, like really slow, 
One, two, three. One, two, three. Throw, drop, 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 drop. 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 And I mean, do this for a freaking hour. And I'm not joking, at least a half an hour. Because it takes that long for that following the rebound motion in your wrist to become second nature. It's all about muscle memory, which of course is what most of drumming is all about. So it's a real zen-like kind of exercise. And don't constantly try to rush it either. You can do it with a metronome. It's not really critical to do it with a metronome. If you want to, it's fine. What is important is that you don't speed up, at least not for a while. One, two, three, one, two, three, throw, 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 drop, 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 throw, drop, 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 throw, drop, 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 throw. And it's so relaxed, and there should be zero tension in your wrists and arms. Sorry, I'm playing sloppy because I'm still not used to talking and playing. So, one more time, and then we'll wrap this one up. Okay, so that's lesson one of the Buster Bailey snare drum technique. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll try to create some more videos showing other applications of that throw drop technique, and we'll take it from there. Thanks.